Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you not quite a painting tutorial, it's actually a basing tutorial. This time we are going to focus on the rollers from Green Stuff World. So when I got my first roller, um, maybe two years ago now, um, I found it extremely difficult to find a video that showed me how to use the roller quickly and efficiently and effectively. There's a bunch of videos out there, but people use all sorts of convoluted methods of you know, mixing clay with this and, and having the roller on blocks so it rolls out evenly and all that. And I just find that to be just too much work. So what I've done here is I put together a quick, simple and effective video on how to use Green Support Rollers. Um, you can get basing done for this on army wide scale using my technique. So. So these are the bits and pieces required to make a Green Stuff World roller uh, base. So some milliput, any type of milliput will do. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, the scalpel is super important. You do need a scalpel and I recommend you have an entire box of fresh blades. Um, it's not very expensive, but yeah, a box of 10A scalpel blades is super required and I will explain why later. Um, the Green Stuff World roller of your choice, <clears throat> some clean water and a selection of bases. So the first thing we're going to do is base prep. Um, you may think there's not a lot of prep to do on bases, but bases are cast just like miniatures. So they do in fact have flash um, and little bits of extra piece that you don't need on the thing, um, which will ruin the finish of this base at the end. So make sure that you tidy them up. The next thing we're going to do is prepare our milliput. So milliput is a two part um, compound. So uh, you want to remove it from its packaging. And oh, basically you need to cut off equal amounts of both types and mix those two together. So I like to put the two sticks next to each other, mark them with a scalpel. Obviously I didn't want to use my fresh scalpel there. I've got a knackered scalpel, quite a dull blade. Um, and I'll show you why the having the sharp scalpel is super important later on. Just mark a line across both so uh, you know the exact amounts obviously you'll figure out the exact amounts yourselves once you have your two equal sized amounts of milliput you mix the two together um, until there is no difference in color until it's one pure color all the way through and then you know that it is fully mixed um, it's quite hard to mix together at the start but as your hands warm up the material um, it gets softer more malleable and it uh, becomes a lot easier Once the uh, milliput is ready to be used, as you can see, it's a lot softer now. Fortunately, your hands do get covered in milliput doing this. You can wear gloves if you want, but I didn't bother. Um, all you do is pull off an amount of milliput that you think will cover um, whatever base size that you are doing. You will inevitably get this wrong and remove too much milliput, but that's fine. You then press the milliput onto the base, squish it around until it is covering up uh, every part of the base. like so super important step now as you can see because we pressed the milliput in it is covered in fingerprints so dip your finger in some water and then just rub it smooth again and that will get rid of all the fingerprints in the uh, milliput on the base perfect next it's time to use the green stuff roller on the material so what i like to do is dip the roller itself into water. Um, this will stop the roller from gripping, uh, grabbing the material and pulling it up. And all you need to do is slowly roll the green stuff roller across the thing. You can put some pressure down, make sure you get in the indentation of the roller in it. Simple, quick, and easy. We have our indentation. Now what we're gonna do is cut away the extra material that's hanging off the side of the base. You need a razor sharp, fresh scalpel to do this. If you have a slightly dull scalpel, as you're going around, you're going to pull the milliput around with you. It's gonna bend it all out of shape and that is not what you want. Um, these uh, scalpel blades will go dull very fast doing this. So you wanna have some fresh scalpel blades and every eight to 10 bases, you actually wanna swap out that scalpel blade. Like I said, scalpel blades are not expensive. Uh, a box of them in our hobby shop but only cost you a couple of euro for like a hundred blades um, so it is well worth the investment 
Just make sure you dispose of them safely. You don't want to be stabbing the bin. So you want to follow the curve of the base. As you can see, the, the base slants out. So I rest the blade against that and carve it around so that it stays nice and flush with the rim of the base. You want to be super careful doing this. You don't want to put your finger on the thing again um, or put more fingerprints in it. Once the edges are done, I put my finger in the water again and I rub them around the edges to smooth off any of the extra bits hanging off. Of course, drop the base is obviously required. And once you finish that step, you will have this perfectly clean, perfectly done base. It took, I'd say, about a minute's worth of work to get this base to this stage. And I think it looks fantastic. I'm doing a squad of custodies on these guys, so I got five bases prepped um, like this. And this is how it turned out. So I've sprayed the base black and then I've sprayed the base gray sear. So what I'm gonna do now is use two contrast paints, Skeleton Horde and Snake Bite Leather. Um, and we're gonna apply these to alternating bricks on the base, um, a couple here, a couple there, um, just to break up the uh, all color monotony of the base. Here's after the first coat is applied, the first color is applied, and now I'm going back with the snake bite leather and applying it to the rest of the bricks, so the remaining bricks on the base. I forgot to show the colors off while doing that, so I'm showing you here. Snake bite leather and skeleton horde are the two contrast paints that I used to get it to this stage. Once the uh, contrast has fully dried, we're going to dry brush it with race bone first. And this is to pull it more in the uh, actual stone color, the limestone or whatever you have it. And we are just going to give this a light but um, light but heavy, if that makes sense. I'm going light on the base, but I'm going to be dry brushing it for you know a good 30, 40 seconds, different directions, making sure I catch all the edges of all the different bricks. I'm bringing it up to more of a, of a nice looking base scheme, but it will leave those tones of the off colored bricks underneath and make it look fantastic. I really like how this turned out. It's exactly what I was looking for. Like I've said before, I'm using this for a custodies army. So this balanced against a gold, it looks great. Now to make a pop a little more, we're gonna go over to Ulthwan Gray. And we are going to once again, dry brush the miniature. Same way as before, we're just gonna go a little bit lighter. We're gonna try and catch the corners and stuff as usual, but not as much. We just wanna make some of those bricks pop and there we have it the last thing we're going to do on uh, this basing tutorial is clean up the rim and what we're going to do for that is our traditional abaddon black i like to do two thin coats around the sides just to get rid of all the brush strokes and stuff because we followed the angle of the base with the blade, it is going to sit pretty flush with the milliput so that when we black it out, it's quite hard to see the line where the milliput ends and the base starts, which really makes it look like this fantastic plinth of a base um, for the miniature. And here is what the finished base looks like. Quite pleased with the result. I will show you in a second what it looks like on the miniature itself, or should I say the miniature on the base, um, the custody that I was talking about, which is also a future video or video that's already been out actually. Um, if you enjoyed this video, if you think that I showed you how to use Green Stuff World rollers um, in an easier manner than anyone has showed before, show me some support, show me some love, um, subscribe to the channel, drop this video a like, and ask me anything you like in the comments below. I will see you guys in the next video.